Good morning and welcome you all to Global MEP Training Academy. Today we are going to see one of the important topic of firefighting that is how to select the firefighting system for a building. We normally use international building codes or local civil defense regulations to decide the firefighting system. So if you go to international building code chapter 3, it defines the different occupancies and chapter number 9, it defines the firefighting requirement for each occupancies like we need sprinkler or standby, a stand pipe system or extinguisher or any other system. Okay. So for example, IBC chapter number 9, it defines that we need to provide the automatic sprinkler system if building height 55 feet or exceeds. Okay, so uh, the first step of this exercise, we need to identify the building habitable height. Let me show you an example. So this is one of the high rise building. Uh, so in this building, we have basement 1, basement 2 and from ground floor to 8th floor and in the roof, we have one MEP room. Okay. So you can measure the building height in multiple ways like from ground floor, from the ground floor level to the roof level of MEP room. So that is 44.46 meter. Otherwise, from ground floor to the 8th floor, 8th uh, floor this area. Okay. So that is 40 meter. Otherwise, there are multiple ways. So we need to know which one is correct. So you need to know one important point to decide this. That is habitable space. So let me show you the international building code definition for the habitable space that is a space in a building for living sleeping eating or cooking okay but the spaces like bathrooms toilet room uh, storage and mainly you need to note down this point utility spaces and similar areas are not considered as habitable space okay so utility space means you can say like a pump room heat exchanger room uh, these are the rooms are not considered in the habitable space okay so it clearly says that we should regularly use those spaces which is considered as habitable space. For example, most of the time we can see the pump rooms like water supply pump rooms, uh, heat exchanger or ETS pump rooms uh, and some cases if you have swimming pool in the roof then uh, that that how the that have its own pump room okay uh, so these are the uh, items sometimes we can experience in the roof so this will these these are the things will not be considered in the habitable spaces so we need to decide the we need to see the standard requirement to finalize this one okay so the building height is to be measured from the floor level of highest occupable or usable story you can see the usable story to the lowest level of fire service assess as per NFA 101 and NFA 5000. So here in this example, the usable story is 8th floor. Okay. It's not MEP room. It's a, it's not a habitable space and the usable uh, story is always the 8th floor of this building. And from in this space also, you can see where the people can stand. Okay. So 8th floor at this level, the people can stand. Okay. And second thing, it is enclosed space. So we need to measure the exact height from ground level or the clear point is where the fire engine can stand. Okay. From that level to the, the extreme usable story floor level. Okay. So let me show you one example. So it will be very clear with this one. And one more thing, uh, this, this other requirement is based on NFA 101 and NFA 5000. Okay. In this example, this is the fire engine uh, standing place. That may be the ground floor of this building. And from here, this is the high rise building. You can see the gravity water tank is located in the roof. Okay. So from we have the measured the distance. That means the habitable height we have measured from ground level to the, the usable story floor level. That means till here, not at this point. Okay. Because here the people can stand. If the fire happened, the people will start running from this level to the bottom okay bottom of the building not at this level this is the open space first of all second thing this is not the usable story okay so we cannot consider from here we need to consider from fire engine standing level to the uh, enclosed space and our usable story floor level okay so this is called as a habitable height okay so in my experience all the codes like nfa uh, I international building code and most of the civil defense like if you go to Saudi building code, uh, Qatar civil defense, 
and UAE fire and life safety code. So all these things have the uh, all these things uh, have the same approach. But there is an exemption. Like if you go to Abu Dhabi Civil Defense, they have different approach. Okay, let me let me open the Abu Dhabi Civil Defense Code requirement. So if you if you read here, Abu Dhabi Civil Defense Authority requires the building height to be measured from top of the roof level of the highest capable or usable story to the lowest le level of the fire service. So if you go to this example, so what uh, what Abu Dhabi Civil Defense says from the fire engine standing at this uh, at this example we can say that the ground floor is the fire engine standing place from here to the top of the roof that means this place. This is the MEP room, the top of the room. So this height is 44.46. So this is the habitable height as per Abu Dhabi Civil Defense. But uh, coming to NFA or IBC, the requirement is different as I mentioned from the fire engine standing level. That is the ground level from here to the, the floor level of this point, the floor level of 8th floor. So these requirements are different. So now let's see the building type based on height. We have three type of uh, buildings, low rise building, uh, mid rise or uh, medium rise and high rise building. So these are the thing you can, um, you can separate, you can categorize based on the height. Okay, that's a habitable height. So buildings till 50 meter, the usable space up to 15 meter is considered as a low rise building. From 15 to 23 meter mid rise and more than 23 meter is a high rise building. So in our case, it is it is uh, more than 23 meter and this one is considered as a high rise building okay and each building have different requirements okay so i have highlighted some of the requirement of high rise building so uh, more the uh, means along with this requirement there are lots of additional requirements will come if you go to nfa 5000 so for high rise building mainly you can see the fire sprinkler protection we need for each level at each level with the the super HD control wall and water flow device that means you can say the zone control wall and we need the class 3 stand pipe system uh, uh, we can discuss in the future videos what is class 1 2 3 and sprinkler requirement etc so further we need the emergency uh, command center we can say ECC and there should be a fireman lift and uh, there will be a two there will be a two-way communication system and lots of things are there for the high risk building as per NFA 5000 so similarly, you need to see the depth of the building also to decide because it has some additional requirement if the condition is not complying. Okay, so if you see the depth of the building, there are two types we can say low depth or high depth underground building. Okay, so in our example, we have two um, basements that is basement one and basement two. The total depth is 8.4 meter, each with 4.2 meter. So what I mentioned here is a structure or a building with up to two basement or up to seven meter below the level of the exit discharge. So in our case, up to two basement, yeah, it is complying, but up to seven meter, it is not complying. So our case, it is more than seven meter. So it will be categorized as the high depth building because it is more than seven meter. Even though we comply with two basement, the depth is uh, till seven meter in the first case. But in the second case, it is more than seven meter. So it will be high depth underground building. So this is the first point we need to consider and second important point is we have to decide the occupancy type for the building as per IBC International Building Code chapter number 3. Okay. So there are total 10 occupancies we are going to decide we are going to see here in this video and this section is a bit lengthy however I have highlighted the important points okay and I hope that uh, with with this occupancy list occupancy hints you can easily find out the type of occupancy at the end of this video and you can easily judge what type of firefighting system we are going to use for this occupancy okay so i have highlighted a summary here for a high rise building that we saw just now and uh, at the end of the video surely you can finalize you can uh, you can see it is correct or not so the first one we are going to see here is assemble group assembly group a okay so you can read the hints for a uh, very clear understanding the assembly group a is for the gathering purpose so you know that where uh, what are the areas we have the gathering for example it is for the gathering can be happen for the uh, social gathering or the religious functions or the food or drink consumption or some for the civic purpose okay so the important thing is the gathering in the gathering there should be more than 50 persons 
then only it will come under assembly group A. If it is less than 50, then it will be under B. So we will see what is B. And here mainly uh, the room or space area, if it is less than 70 square meter, then it will not be covered as assembly group A. Okay. So then we have to refer the group uh, type B. Okay. And assembly group A, it has five subgroup. So in the hints, assembly group A, this is usually for the fixed seating intended for the production and weaving of the performance arts okay so mainly this point it is for the fixed seating places like the theaters so it has a fixed seating and you can view the performing arts or the films okay so motion pictures so this so this comes under assembly group a1 in assembly group a2 a2 that is for food or drink consumption in a1 group there was fixed seating but here you can find the examples related to loose chair and tables not fixed chairs like a theater for example you can see restaurants cafeteria nightclubs so these are the areas we can find loose chairs arrangements so the next one is assembly group a3 so here assembly group a3 is for the worship areas and uh, amusement uh, amusement areas or something like that an example you can see the dance halls the libraries museum uh, the places of religious worship okay so here what important thing you have to see here is uh, if a seller sells books it is under occupancy type m that is a mercantile occupancy not a3 so here we have the library which is store the books okay so this comes under assembly group but if a person who sell if a person sells the book then that will not come under assembly group that will go to the mercantile group type pm that we will discuss very quickly in the coming slides the next one is assembly group a4 it is very simple that this is for weaving of indoor sports events like a tennis courts okay this is for the indoor sports event if you go to outdoor sports events that will come under assembly group a5 Okay, like a stadium you, where you can watch the football or cricket whatever it is it's the outdoor viewing event outdoor sports event comes under assemble group a5 so this five the five sub categories are there in the assemble group then business group b uh, you can see the hints like business group b if it, it has to be like less than 50 people so if it is more than 50 people then it will be a type a occupancy type a okay and mainly we are using this business group b for office professional or service type transaction including storage of records so this point is very important because sometimes you can see in the office building there will be a small place for storing of records so that time we cannot say that small type of store as storage occupancy okay so that is part of office building okay so we need to consider that also part of office building and it will come under business group b okay so uh, mainly this point uh, educational occupancies for students above the 12th grade okay this is very important thing because uh, from grade kg 1 to 12th standard is comes under educational group and above 12th standard it comes like uh, occupancy type b like you can say the colleges universities so all these comes under business group b So the next one is educational group. It doesn't have any subcategory. It's only one. Like more than six person, it is like more than six person. It's same like similar to assembly. But the, here the people are gathering only for the education purpose. Okay, not for the, uh, not something as I, as we saw in the uh, assembly group. Okay, so there should be more than six people for educational purpose. So it is uh, educational group E. From grade KG one to or kg1 or lkg1 to 12th standard comes under education group education group if it is more than 12th standard just now we saw that it comes under business group like colleges and universities and factory group factory group f so in this in this one we can see the assembling disassembling works fabrication uh, works finishing manufacturing packaging repair or processing operation will take place here so here there will be chance like a combustible and non-combustible material but should not be the part of high hazard so in the coming slides we are going to see what is high hazard okay so uh, high hazard it has uh, different kinds different kinds of things so that should not uh, mix it with the factory industrial group okay so in this one there are two subgroups we can see for easy understanding so subgroup one first one is a moderate hazard 
so in the moderate hazard mainly you can see it's for the uh, it is covers like combustible material okay but it should not be part of high hazard because in high hazard also we have some combustible material so we need to find the difference between high hazard high hazard and factory moderate hazard so in the moderate hazard you can see the combustible materials like uh, the furnitures leather products the bicycles so these are the things is uh, comes under moderate hazard it's not like a high hazard okay in the next category the low hazard like it's non combustible materials okay the fabrication or manufacturing of non combustible materials okay like you can see the brick factory so which will not produce any uh, high flammable or high hazard items so this this uh, the same similar way you can see the foundries so these are the things comes under low hazard we have few more occupancies that we will see in the coming next part two video and after that you can easily find out how to decide the firefighting system for each occupancies so take care bye bye